Christmas from the Blackfeet Reservation in Browning, Montana. Uh, born and raised for about the first 17 years of my life and um, you know, came out to Los Angeles to be a movie star. <laughs> in 1962, on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, a star was born. Steve Revis grew up in a large family living with his six siblings in northwestern Montana. Growing up, he attended the South Dakota High School and received a degree in arts from the Haskell Indian Junior College. At the age of 25, Revis made an appearance in his first film, War Party, a film about racial tension between the U.S. Calvary and a community of Native Americans. Revis and his brother Tim made a small appearance in the Frank Rodman film as stuntmen, where Revis quickly realized the potential he might have. He once said, I wanted to try acting. I thought to myself that I could do the work. And like many aspiring actors, Revis moved from Montana to California, but couldn't afford a place to live, so he slept in his car most nights. Finally, Revis was able to book his first real role in the 1988 film Twins and worked alongside Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger as he played the Indian. Hollywood started to know Revis's name, and he was cast as the Sioux Warrior in the award-winning film Dances with Wolves. Revis quotes, this film was a breakthrough for me. Even though I didn't have any lines, I had a lot of on-camera time. Through this experience, he was able to learn great skills from Grand Green that would help him in the future. After booking commercials and small movie appearances, Revis was able to get the role of Chateau in Geronimo and American Legend. For so long, Revis has been in the shadows, but Geronimo changed his career. Revis had heard the true historical facts about Chateau, but wanted to add his own acting flair to the character. I saw Chato as a man who cared for his people. He didn't want to see them die or suffer hardship. I portrayed him from the heart. As Revis was very proud of his role in Geronimo, a film of misrepresentations showing all Thomas King tropes from the stoic to the bloodthirsty, we can really see this take place when the Pawnee warriors attack the Apache tribe, leaving us with a depiction of the bloodthirsty savage. When you're in a fight with Apache, things go bad. You save the last bullet for yourself. You don't want to get taken alive. Moving out of his car and onto the big screen, roles came easier to him as he booked Shep Proudfoot in the 1996 film Fargo. Many may recognize his ex-convict character for choking out Carl with a belt in the film, as well as the prostitute Carl is, um, hanging out with. We see themes of toxic masculinity being shown here as Revis' character deals with issues through violence, abuse towards women, and criminality. While his character is portrayed as the bad guy, you find yourself rooting for him, hoping for justice in the end. Over Revis's career, he has accomplished so much, only taking roles that he thought were appropriate to him and his people. Revis quotes, I intend to take roles that I think my sons and other native children will be proud to see me in. That's the most important thing to me. He has always stayed determined through every no, and you're just not right for this part, and has conquered the big screen, as he won First Americans in the Arts Award for Fargo. Revis being an indigenous man carries the weight of intergenerational trauma, so achieving such greatness goes to show resilience and native pride. Revis sets an example for all Indigenous youth around the world, which is a huge step towards reconciliation, as young children look up to him and gain the confidence they need to heal the past. Revis's dream was to have Indigenous people being featured on the big screen. I feel that we're pretty close. There are Natives out there who are pushing their scripts, searching for funding to do those projects. We have intelligence. It's just a matter of being at the right place at the right time. And I know there's a lot of people out there trying to make a dream come true. It will happen. Revis wanted to make a difference for Indigenous actors and actresses across North America. He persevered as a struggling actor from Montana, but was able to make a name for himself. From sleeping in his 1971 Ford Torino to winning awards and working alongside the greats, he never lost touch with his roots, as he would return home to Blackfeet Reservation to participate in sweat ceremonies. I never forgot where I came from, says Revis. Sadly, Steve passed away at the age of 55 in Montana. By his side was his loving wife, Maciel, and his three sons. We celebrate Revis's bravery and commitment as he came from a small reservation in Montana to a legend on the big screen. That when I think of life, it's always about living that life in a beautiful way. <laughs>